Okay, Dr. Spudis, our first question today. What is the mass of the moon? That's a good question. I don't know that. It's, I, I know that it's, I know it in terms of the Earth. It's about 1% of the mass of the Earth. So whatever the Earth's number is, multiply that times 0.01. Dr. Scudis, how old is the moon? Well, we think the moon is about 4.6 billion years old. It's the same age as the Earth, maybe a little bit younger, because we think that the moon formed when a giant planet collided with the Earth and spew out a disk of debris that became the moon. Dr. Spudis, how was the moon created? How was the moon created? Well, we think, we don't know for sure, but we think that about 4.6 billion years ago, another planet about the size of Mars existed in the same orbit as the Earth. And the Earth and this planet collided. And during that collision, a disk of hot vapor and particles were sent into orbit around the Earth, forming a ring, very much like the rings of Saturn. And those rings were not stable and quickly assembled themselves into the moon. What would happen to the Earth if no moon existed in orbit? Well, one of the things that's really interesting about the moon is that it helps stabilize the orientation of the spin axis of the Earth. The spin axis is inclined about 23 degrees from the plane around which the Earth orbits the sun, and that's why we have seasons. When the northern hemisphere points at the sun, it's summer, and then winter in the southern hemisphere, and then vice versa. Now, if the moon did not exist, that axis would wobble about wildly because of the gravitational perturbations of the other planets and the sun in relation to the Earth. So the moon actually stabilizes the spin axis of the Earth and makes it a very nice, comfortable climate to live in. Can you build a sandcastle with lunar regolith on the surface of the moon? Is there sufficient cohesion? Uh, that's an interesting question. I don't know the answer to that. I think probably yes. I don't think you could make a very tall castle because since there's no water, which is what makes sand moldable and packable in the very large, tall structures on, on beaches on the Earth, you don't have that on the moon. So it may well be that you could make very small structures that could, because the lunar soil does clod together and cohesively, but not very big ones. If we wanted to perform some basic micro-manufacturing on the moon in order to reduce the payload mass that we need to deliver to the moon, in support of exploration and development. What types of lunar material would be most promising and what types of material processing steps would be most useful? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, the most useful substance the moon has that we found in recent years is water. It turns out there are billions of tons of water at the poles of the moon. And water is useful for a lot of things. It can support human life. You can drink it. You can crack it into its component hydrogen and oxygen and breathe the oxygen. Water acts as a good radiation shield, so you can jacket your habitat in water and protect yourself from cosmic rays. But the most important use for water is as rocket propellant. When you separate it into its two component elements and liquefy those elements into liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, it's the most powerful chem chemical propellant we know of. So water is the most useful substance. But just the bulk soil is actually, is actually useful as well, because we can take that center it in, into ceramics and use that for a variety of things, including heat shields to deliver payloads back to Earth orbit. So the moon is made up of, of various metals like aluminum and iron, and those metals can be actually extracted from the soil and used to make building materials. So there's a wide variety of things we could make from the moon, none of it very high tech, but all of it having mass and therefore having value because it's already in space. About how much per pound would it cost to safely deliver a payload, for instance, a small rover or an ISRU experiment, to the lunar surface? Well, it depends on how much it costs to launch per pound from the Earth's surface. But basically, we think the, the shuttle used to cost about $20,000 per pound. But right now, the cheapest boosters we have launch things to Earth orbit at, about, at a cost of about $5,000 per pound. Now, for each pound you get to the lunar surface, you need to carry weight for fuel to both make it leave low Earth orbit, to enter into the lunar gravity field, and break to land on the moon. And the factor is, I think, on the order of seven times. So to land one pound on the moon, you need seven pounds in low Earth orbit. So seven times 5,000 is $35,000 per pound.